Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, really ain't got a whole lot to, to still go with the intro, but it is I, the legendary DJ Spinatic. Wait, wait, that's not right. The legendary Savak. There we go. And of course today we are talking about Deshaun Watson. The potential for this trade to go down. Because, you know, it's just been polluting the airwaves all week so far. Um, a lot of stuff to get into. So, of course, uh, there may or may not be some links in the description to some stuff on Amazon that if you happen to go through the links and purchase, maybe I get some kickback for it. You know, hey, helps keep this channel alive, helps keep me alive. So if you care, give something. <laughs> Anyways, so earlier in the week it was reported by this dude. Uh, I don't remember his name now. He He's a Houston beat writer. He's been at it for a long, long time, and as a result, there's a lot of media members who happen to hold his opinion in very high esteem, and he reported that the trade deal between the Miami Dolphins and the Texans for Deshaun Watson could go down this week. Now, here's my problem, though, with that headline, man. That's such a vague general headline. That's like reporting, it could go down this week. This month, this year, this century, that's like reporting that the planet could revolve around the sun sometime this year. Like, that, what does that even mean? It could happen this week. Could have happened yesterday. Still didn't. Could happen today. Could happen in the next half hour, so stay tuned. Come on, guys. But uh, the biggest thing that I really took away from it, though, was the slow response by the organization. Obviously, at this point now, Brian Flores came out in a press conference and was asked directly about it and gave a kind of half-hearted response. Yeah, two is our quarterback. We were happy with our quarterback room. No, you're not. No, you're not, because if you were, this wouldn't have even come out, wouldn't have been a story. You know, way to wait, by the way. Way to wait, like, two days while this story just... Set the, set the internet on fire before you came out and said something. Waited for the rumor spark to become a rumor frickin' inferno before you decide to throw a glass of water on it, you know? And this has kind of been the, the case with the Dolphins organization up to this point and their handling of the rebuild and Tua. It was going well <laughs> until it wasn't. Um, the biggest, like, you know, when I look back, uh, you can point to a lot of different situations as to where the decline began, where we kind of went off track. I know uh, some people could look at drafting Tua as being that thing. Some people could look at the firing of Chad O'Shea as that thing. If you ask me, it really happened uh, with the benching of Fitz when they decided Tua was going to be the starter. That was the moment right there. Hold on just a moment. If you ask me, the decline happened as soon as they decided to rush Tua into action. Impatience became the crippling part of this rebuild. It's what hindered it, hampered it, it's what set us on the course that we're on now. When you look at it that way, trading for Deshaun Watson makes a ton of sense for this organization and the direction that it's headed. Impatience has been the name of the game. We can't wait for him, you know? Even though the plan was originally, okay, we're gonna bring Tua in, we're gonna bring him along slowly at the pace that he needs to be brought along, which is exactly what you needed to do. There's no reason that Tua couldn't develop into a, a quality starter coming off of this disastrous hip injury. There's no reason that it couldn't have worked, but you needed to dedicate the necessary time. There was no reason to bench him last year, or rather, excuse me, there was no reason to start him last year and bench Fitz. Fitz was playing well enough, the defense was playing excellently. There, there was just no reason for it. He was rushed into action and he was very clearly not ready and that's coming from me. And of course we all know how uh, incredibly valid my opinion is. I am the legendary borderline Hall of Fame third string Pee Wee punter. Okay, I think I know a thing or two, but if I was able to see that he wasn't ready, how the hell was it that the organization wasn't? So, anyways, going in with that theme, it would make perfect sense for the Dolphins to trade for Deshaun Watson at this point. Even with all those pending court cases hanging above his head, 
it just makes sense. They think they can contend now, even though we're looking at them playing against Jacksonville, you couldn't freaking imagine it. I can't imagine adding adding a Deshaun Watson to the situation is going to make it that all that much better. We're still going to be treading water. You didn't fix the offensive line, which I've mentioned this before. How on earth can we have dumped that much draft capital into the offensive line and they still look like that? That's absurd. Come on, guys. I hope that the Dolphins front office was watching that Thursday night game with Cleveland and Denver. That right there is how you assemble and coach an offensive line. Because that way, you have an offensive line that good, doesn't matter what happens. You can lose number one receiver, number two receiver, both your top running backs, your freaking starting quarterback. Doesn't matter. They just still rode up and down the field on Denver. Case Keenum rode up and down the field on Denver. In freaking credible. Never minding that, though, of course. I think Rich Eisen nailed it. <laughs> he said two was probable for the game against Atlanta. Probable with a bruised ego, and it would make perfect sense. If I'm Tua, personally, I'm requesting a trade. Get me the f*** out of there. Get me, send me anywhere. In fact, I compiled a short list. Anywhere where I can go, start setting the league on fire, and show you guys exactly all the mistakes that you just made. Okay, uh, some of the teams I think that would probably, maybe, possibly be interested in his services for the right price would be, uh, say, Atlanta. You know, Matt Ryan's still on his way out. He's not getting any younger. Green Bay, it looks pretty convincingly that Aaron Rodgers is going to be on his way out. Minnesota, they've never been sold on Kirk Cousins. Never. Uh, New Orleans... Still up in the air on whether or not they, they want to continue rolling with Jameis Winston, although I like Jameis, but uh, Tua would be a little bit closer to what they had with Drew Brees. Um, Philadelphia, as much as that would suck for Jalen Hurts, um, yeah, Philadelphia would be an interesting fit. You know, he'd mesh into that offense pretty well, be reunited with another one of his former college teammates, Mr. Devontae Smith. Um, although, it... To be honest, and some people might laugh at this, but uh, it would be remain to be seen if Tua could beat out Gardner Minshew for that starting job. Um, and then Indy, because we're still not 100% sure if Carson Wentz is going to be the guy out there. He's, what, got another season or two to prove it? So it's up in the air. So there are a few places that he could go and still continue to prove himself. But, of course, that all remains to be seen. But if I'm Tua, I would want out. Because this, this organization clearly doesn't know what the f*** it's doing. This organization has kind of mishandled the situation from the beginning. Personally, I didn't want to draft to it. From the moment he injured that hip, I was out on him. I didn't think it was a good idea, but I rode with him. I said, okay, you know, our, our organization took him, that's it. <laughs> Ain't no sense in bitching about it, although, you know, you tell that to some of the people on Twitter. But it was a done deal. I rolled with him, but I was on board with the original plan. Let's let him sit and learn, okay? And I'm sure somebody, if anybody's been paying attention that long and caught me on the Fanatics, you remember me saying this, though, was saying as, uh, I think it was following probably a pretty poor Ryan Fitzpatrick game, that if that was the version of Fitz we were going to get, you might as well put Tua out there. However, I didn't know Tua didn't know the whole damn playbook. So that kind of changes things. In that, in that regard, it would have made much more sense. Just keep Fitz in, in there. Win, lose, doesn't really matter. This isn't a real season. You know what I mean? That's what we were looking at. I mean, he was playing well enough. And it would have made a lot of sense. <sighs> Alright, well. Either way. Are they going to do it? I don't know. Is it cool to imagine what our team could look like? with Deshaun Watson at the helm? Of course. But I really do feel for Tua. And if I were him, I would request a trade. I'd be done. Because, you know what? Organization has never particularly shown that much faith. Uh, the media has been against him basically since he stepped off the plane. They loved him during the draft and then were out on him the second he got drafted. It's absurd. So... I'd, I'd be done with it. You know, fan base has never been completely on board. It's just been, it's been a, a cluster. It's been a 
show. And I would want no part of it anymore. Send me somewhere that's a little bit better managed, you know? And for them to even be considering bringing in Deshaun Watson without knowing what's going to happen with these pending cases, I know there's civil lawsuits and not criminal yet, but we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We don't even know if he's going to be able to play next this year, next year, and freaking next three years. So it'd be a hell of a gamble to make. Because if it turns out that he's not going to get, get around these, that they're not going to disappear, then this man simply... We trade away our future for the next several years for a quarterback who won't be able to play just for him to land in Miami and get and land on the commissioner's exempt list. And if that's the case, then now we're out the quarterback and all those picks. Well, Tua goes off and probably does pretty well elsewhere. You know? But I digress. Whatever happens, it's going to happen. I'm going to root for this team regardless. I'm a Miami fan. That's what we do. And, uh, you know, that's it. Now, looking ahead, though, of course, to Sunday, which I guess if I get this uploaded on Saturdays tomorrow, uh, we face the Falcons, and both teams rank in the bottom five in scoring defense this season. So that's just awesome. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jalen Waddle can really pop off again the same way he did against Jacksonville. I would love that because he's on my fantasy lineup. So, let's go, Waddle. Let's go. Uh, this is, of course, another very winnable game, at least under normal circumstances. But it does look like half our freaking defense is questionable. Devontae Parker is also questionable. Uh, Manx, however the hell you pronounce that offensive lineman's name, is questionable with a groin injury. Uh, Jalen Phillips, questionable with an ankle injury. You know, we're, we've are we got a whole lot going on there. And they have, uh, Atlanta's got Dante Fowler out with a knee injury, and uh, Williams, their cornerback, is doubtful with a hamstring injury. But they'll basically be in better shape than we will. And uh, the majority of people are thinking it's going to go Atlanta's way. Now, this is still a winnable game for us, but this offense needs to get in gear and get its shit together. It needs to get things going early, often. Stay on it. I don't know what it is, what it's been about this team, but we have started very good. We would come out and have, we've had a, a few of these opening drives where we go right down the field and score, and then after that, it's like we don't have a playbook anymore, and everyone, they're just drawing plays up in the dirt as they go. Now, hopefully, we've got a better game plan in store for Atlanta because, again, this is a very winnable game. It is a very beatable team. So, fingers crossed, Finns fans. Fingers crossed. Let's hold, hope that these guys can get this together and that we can have ourselves a victory Monday to celebrate. And we can all, most of us anyways, anybody, most of us working a regular schedule can go into work on Monday morning with a smile on our face and able to enjoy ourselves. So, uh, that's about all I got for you, though, because I, I didn't write anything down except for those the list of teams that would maybe be interested in Tua for the right price. So, uh, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, like and subscribe. <laughs> or don't. doesn't really matter to me. I think I'm doing these more for me than anybody else. But uh, if you did stay to watch, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Be sure to, of course, check the description down there because there could be some links to some goodies, which could be some uh, fun Finn stuff or just fun stuff in general, useful shit. You never know. Uh, for myself, I guess, and this spotted dog on, on the futon, I'm the legendary Savak. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.